Cated dogs are the best animals that are suitable for companionship. Mostly, people they do prefer them because, you know, cats and dogs sometimes they make you feel better. They make you uh, feel okay even when you are stressed or also maybe when you are lonely. But there comes a problem when you just find or you just wake up in the morning and you find your, your, your dog or your pet dead and all of a sudden. Like recently, for example, there's just one uh, patient who just came with his dog and the dog was found dead all of a sudden. Why is it that? So this is what we're going to look at, uh, the type of tumor that is a silent killer, a malignant tumor that is called hemangiosarcoma. So starting by defining this silent killer, uh, mostly it, it occurs in dog. So hemangiosarcoma is an aggressive form of cancer that really develops from blood vessels. That's why, why it's called hemangiosarcoma. It can occur anywhere in the body, but most often affects a dog's spleen, heart, liver, or skin. So hemangiosarcoma tumors, they are composed of abnormal blood and blood vessels and uh, that are fragile and also may be invasive and easily ruptured. So when a tumor ruptures, it hemorrhages into a cavity like uh, the chest or maybe abdomen, causing many of the clinical signs. So this just happens suddenly. And the clinical signs that, that are associated with hemangiosarcoma mostly they also depends uh, with uh, the type of bleeding or maybe the location of bleeding. So hemangiosarcoma typically affects uh, the middle-aged uh, to older dogs, but it has also been uh, reported in puppies only a few months old. And some breeds, they may be predisposed to, to hemangiosarcoma, especially if you hold or if you have this pets, I think you should be careful. Number one, that is German Shepherds. Number two, that is a Golden Retriever. Number three, Labrador Retriever retrievers, boxers, pit bulls, and most of the dogs with thin haircuts. The most common types of hemangiosarcoma are the one that I mentioned before, that is the splenic hemangiosarcoma. The splenic hemangiosarcoma is the most common type in dogs, and this can invest the spleen and abdominal organ primarily responsible for immune system function and uh, red and white blood cells and also storage of blood products. So when a dog is diagnosed with a splenic tumor, uh, two-thirds of those tumors are malignant or cancerous. That means it's very bad, it's very dangerous. It is often seen in, uh, in combination with liver and cardiac uh, hemangiosarcoma. And another type also is a uh, cardiac hemangiosarcoma and this can typically forms in the right atrium of the of the heart chambers it is uh, it is the most common cancer affecting uh, the heart and the second most common location of hemangiosarcomas and is very dangerous and deadly once the heart is affected then of course everything is down other common areas that are affected by hemangiosarcoma are the liver kidney uh, brain the oral cavity the abdomen muscles so when it comes to the symptoms of hemangiosarcoma in dogs, the clinical signs of this one, they vary with the organs involved. So a hallmark of hemangiosarcoma is the ability to bleed profusely. Primarily because these tumors are made from blood vessels, blood cells and vessels. So the tumors are invasive at the primary tissue site, but also distantly aggressive. This is a process that is called metastasis. You know, that means the tumor grows from its original place and also goes to, to the other side. So it's very dangerous that you can only find it on the one place and also it passes through with the blood vessels. The vascular nature of hemangiosarcoma commonly leads to, to large uh, blood field tumors within the spleen. So it will be sort of like a bomb. So the tissue is not healthy and is easily breakable. So if you, if you just hit your dog or maybe if you just if you just crash somewhere, then that means it's going to be a problem. And uh, while some other dogs, they can also be asymptomatic for a while, which is the most dangerous thing. So pet parents or pet owners, they most often notice clinical signs secondary to a ruptured splenic tumor and, and also maybe something that is including weakness and uh, pale gums, uh, lethargy, a decreased appetite and also a distended abdomen. 
cardiac hemangiosarcoma, sarcoma and this one the, the cancer it weakens and also it affects the, the blood supply and these tumors are also brittle and unstable causing hemorrhage into the sac around the heart and lungs because you know it's, it's coming from the heart so the danger comes from there as cardiac hemangiosarcoma progresses uh, the pet owners sometimes uh, can notice uh, collapses and maybe lethargy uh, weakness coughing and also a difficulty in breathing remember we are talking about the heart that is linked to the respiratory system so and also ex exercise intolerance and vomiting can also be realized so that will be easier to see but now what is the cause of this uh, this tumor so like the cause of hemangiosarcoma in dogs and uh, mostly the cause is not known like it is likely to be uh, something that has a, a genetical link as shown by the, the predisposed breeds because uh, mostly it can come from that way and or oh, but for maybe for skin hemangiosarcoma it has been linked to ultraviolet exposure especially in thin uh, light coated dogs in humans some forms of chemical uh, insecticides and toxins and radiation have been linked to hemangiosarcoma development but not in, in animals actually. And also the diagnosis, we can just see this one through some x-rays and also maybe uh, abdominal ultrasounds and also a cardiac echocardiogram that is for, for cardiac uh, uh, hemangiosarcoma. Maybe, and also maybe we can make use of uh, uh, an MR, MRI. That is the one that can also help. Why? Because uh, it's inside. So that is uh, that those are the most or the convenient methods that we can use for diagnosis. Uh, the cardiac hemangiosarcoma may be generally heart tumors, they are usually diagnosed by an ultrasound of the heart because you can see the movement of the heart and how it works. So it can be easier because uh, it can be easier actually when you are using uh, an echocardiogram. So veterinarians uh, or maybe the, uh, the vet technician, they may suspect a, a heart tumor after a lot of, uh, maybe a lot of time where the animal just collapses and also maybe there are some visibility of a poor heart functions so those are the things that maybe we can uh, we can identify and also biopsy biopsy would also be required for a definitive diagnosis but due to the location of the tumor or maybe around the heart a biopsy is very very dangerous and typically not recommended <laughs> and most uh, cardiac tumors they are suspected to the to be hemangiosarcoma but Few are confirmed, yeah, of course. It's not like only every, also uh, all of them have to be like that. And cardiac hemangiosarcoma is mostly commonly discovered with other types of hemangiosarcoma, uh, most notably of the spleen and during the, the diagnosis wake up uh, process for, for, splenic, for splenic hemangiosarcoma. So one thing I can also say is try to make sure that your dog has gone to check up just as what people do, what human do, what human beings do too. I mean, as you send your dog for maybe for, for brushing the teeth or maybe if you're doing it yourself, just make sure that those things aren't there because it might cause a problems. And surgery is the, the most often used in, in, in cases of, of skin and sarcoma. For the spleen, yeah. If it's not complicated, then maybe it can work, but most of them, they are unsuccessful. So once it just diagnosed but if it's diagnosed early yeah it, at least it, it, it's much better that yeah it you can you can dissect or maybe you can de 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 divide or the, the affected party and maybe uh, just especially for dogs you can even remove the spleen and the dog can just keep on surviving and nothing will happen so okay uh this is the the end of uh, the, our video thank you so much please just don't forget to to support by subscribing